This is James from Titan Drones. Today we are excited to announce the launch of our new cockpit product. Uh, our cockpit is built on the same platform as the command case. It's a nice compact Nanak 910 case. Um, and this has a couple distinct differences uh, from the command case. And uh, you'll probably notice it as soon as I open it. So as you see, what we did is we actually built your um, your controller, your control features and functions and hardware into the case itself. So this is still a ground station, amplified ground station like the command case. However, you actually have your, your uh, controls actually built into the case itself. So if this is a, uh, a platform you'd be interested in, you do not have to interface with a harness and have your controller separate. It's all one compact case. All right, we're gonna go over some of the, uh, the features of the case. Uh, it should feel pretty familiar to you as you know, we're using the same joysticks that are in your factory controller from DJI. You can probably assume that this is your C1 button, C2 button. You have your scroll wheels as normal. You have your flight mode toggle here. This happens to be an Inspire one. Um, so you have your you know, return to home with your landing gear. Um, you're all familiar with these buttons, um, you know, your shutter, your play, et cetera. Um, and then this would be what you're normally used to seeing on the bottom of your controller. And now you have your HDMI and your, your, uh, your, your CAN bus and, and USB, etc. cetera. Um, this is your controller and it's also your ground station built into the ones, built into one. So when you want to charge your controller, you would plug your controller in. That's the same thing you do in this port here. You're going to use your factory DJI, um, um, wall charger to actually charge this 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 case your amplifiers are, are built into the lid um, this is your and just like you're used to turning on your DJI controller it's the same process and you have your LED indicators there as well all right the cockpit does come stock with our highest gain Omni antennas um, which are these somewhere between 14 and 16 inches long depending on you know what the angle you have them bent at all you would do is screw them on here into this RPSMA jack. Same thing on the other side. Now, if you're flying on a, a flat table, um, then remember you always want these kind of um, you know perpendicular to the ground. Uh, unless you're flying, you know, straight up, then that's a different story. We all know to put the antennas out, so you know they will bend. They will angle themselves depending on you know where you want them, but for this purpose, I'll just leave them like this. Um, so now this has these are directly connected to the amplifiers, of course, and then sending all the signal through to your your main board and everything is here on your main console. Um, and then you would just take your sunshade assembly, which you're used to seeing from us. Start with your sides. top goes on last. All right, there's your sunshade that you're used to seeing with our, either our tactical or with our, uh, our command case. And I probably should have done it first, but your iPad, we magnetically mount. So it goes right in there like that. And you're left with a hole here so you can actually access the, uh, the USB port or the lightning port. So you'll plug your cable in and just like on your RC, you'll plug into the, uh, you know, the USB port that used to be on the bottom of your RC. Now it's built into the case. So generally speaking, now you are basically ready to interface with your aircraft as normal as this is your controller. Uh, all right, as you can see now, we're connected to the aircraft. Like I said, this one happens to be an Inspire 1. So just like you used to see on your RC, you got a green light, you're connected to your, to your aircraft. There are a couple buttons on here that you um, are probably wondering what they are. Uh, this one, first of all, is actually a volume control button. What it does, it has three positions. One being uh, volume full up, just like it is on your DJI controller. Um, if you're like me, you hate the annoying beeping of the RTH or the low battery warning. You have the ability to actually turn that down or turn it off. Um, and that's what this button does. It allows you to choose between volume high, which is normal, um, volume low, or volume off. So that's just something you know that we added because we know that can be kind of annoying. 
This over All right, I'm gonna power this up and uh, just show you uh, how this volume control works. So I'm gonna uh, power it up with the joystick in this position. And um, basically what that's gonna do is give us a faulty calibration reading. And then you can hear the sound and we'll show you what this volume control button does. So basically what you're hearing now is the high volume that you, you're, you're used to hearing from the DJI controller. You can go in the middle, um, flip the switch up. That's completely off so you don't have to listen to it. And again, this is for your RTH or low battery or whatever. You just don't want to hear the noise. Flip it up again, it's a much lower volume. But you can still have an audible warning. We just gave you three different options, off, high, and low. All right, this button here, here you notice with the guard around it, uh, we added this button. It's actually a cruise control. Uh, and what this does, this allows you to cut down on, on fatigue. So if you wanted to go half speed or full speed, depending, you can push this forward and your, your aircraft is actually going to fly um, in a straight line at full speed, uh, no matter which heading it's at. And then you have your hands free if you want to do um, some specific maneuvers and use your other buttons why this is, is operating this stick for you, basically. Um, and you do have some adjustment here, so you can go, you know, different speed levels, but you push it forward and, uh, all the way, and obviously it's going full speed in that direction. So, um, you, you know, you kind of, you don't have to, if you're flying home and you don't have RTH initiated and you're used to, you know, holding this down, um, you don't have to anymore. You know, push this forward and it's gonna do that for you. Uh, and, and there could be some, um, obviously some, some shots that you're aiming to get to where you could, you know, use another hand, it, it would be pretty helpful. So that's kind of why we added that. So it's a cool little feature. Uh, we did put a guard around it because you do not want to take off with this in the full forward position and you don't want to accidentally hit it when you're flying. So um, when it's pushed all the way down, everything's normal, you use this as normal, you're not getting rid of that. When this is all the way forward, your drone is flying full speed, straight ahead or whichever heading that it's pointed at. Um, like you're used to on your stock DJI controller, uh, we put these buttons close together. So your C1, you can hold down easily with, with one finger and then use uh, use your scroll wheel function. Same thing with C2, you're able to hold that down and use your scroll wheel function as well to go through some of your camera adjustment settings. Action. All right, we have um, high gain omnidirectional antennas on here right now. You could obviously unscrew these uh, and now you have access to these RPSMA jacks and you can go out to any external antenna. So if you have some directional antennas on a tripod, et cetera, or if you're going out to maybe a car kit, um, you have access to your amplifiers at those two ports right there. Just unscrew your whips and then run cables to uh, any external antennas you may have. Um, usually it's gonna be directionals or like I said, omnis on a car kit. All right, when you're done flying for the day, um, you just shut down as normal. Now your RC is disconnected. Take off your sunshade. Unscrew your whip antennas. And obviously we have cutouts in here to allow you to accommodate everything. There you go. You have a nice compact. Um, and this is probably looking a little bigger in the video than it is. This is a pretty compact case. It's probably about 13 by nine inches by four inches. So look up the specs on the 910 and you'll see the exact dimensions. But uh, this right here, as always, we do have a um, quarter 20 uh, threaded plate in here. So if ever you have a, a mount, want to mount this on a tripod, it will accommodate a quarter 20 threaded shoe, tripod shoe. There will be a couple different pricing structures with the cockpit. Um, like I said, this is an Inspire one. It has an Inspire one uh, RC built into it. Um, so there will be two options. Number one is we can use a brand new remote and build you one of these ground stations from scratch. Or two, we will give you the ability to send us uh, your RC, uh, whether you have a spare or, or, or whatever, and we can convert your RC into the cockpit so you do you will have two pricing structures we will be releasing that information soon uh, so just know you'll have two options a brand new one or we use your rc sure. all right at launch um, this is ready to go for anybody with uh, phantom 3 advanced phantom 3 pro phantom 4 phantom 4 pro inspire 1 matrice 600 uh, matrice 100 and your a3 controllers uh, we will be launching a version for the inspire 2 uh, and for the, you know, the Matrice 200 as well, um, and that'll be coming in the future.